Hello and welcome to SCAN's eCampus. SCAN's eCampus is a gold approved learning partner of ACCA. On this channel, we bring you demo videos of different courses available at SCAN's eCampus. So don't forget to subscribe to our channel to get notifications of additional videos and hit the like button. In this recording, we are going to cover a very important topic risk and uncertainty. So the idea of considering risk and uncertainty in area C of the syllabus, the decision making techniques is that whenever we make decisions, they are based on uh, future data and future data is uncertain. So how to basically manage the uncertainty, which is there in future data and how to make decisions effectively. That's the basic idea of the topic here. Now, let's have a look at the basic definitions of risk and uncertainty first. So risk first. So risk refers to the events of future which may or may not occur, but whose probability can be mathematically calculated. So it is when the probabilities of the possible outcomes are known. However, uncertainty refers to situations which may or may not occur but whose probability cannot be calculated in terms of probabilities so it is where the randomness of outcomes cannot be expressed in terms of specific probabilities so in this video and a couple of other videos we are going to learn the different methods of how to manage the uncertainty and uh, we are also going to learn the decision rules when they're is an uncertainty situation given in the exam. Now let's discuss about the attitudes towards risk and uncertainty. So there are three attitudes towards risk, risk seeker, risk averse and risk neutral. So risk seeker is a person or a manager of a business who likes to take a lot of risk and who always look at the best possible outcome no matter how small the chance of that best possible outcome to actually occur. So this person can be called as the optimist. Looking at the best possible outcomes, right? On the other hand, there is a concept of risk averse manager. So risk averse manager is a person who basically assume that the worst outcome might occur. So they're always looking at the worst possible outcome and they will make a decision that will minimize the risk for the organization, right? So these are the people who are pessimists while taking the decisions. The third attitude is the risk neutral person. Risk neutral person is a decision maker who are prepared to make decisions that basically balances the risk and return. So they are focusing on most likely options and they are best described as the realistic managers and looking at most likely options. So risk seeker, best possible outcomes, risk averse, worst outcomes, and risk neutral focuses on most likely outcomes. Now, in order to reduce uncertainty while making a decision, the best way to reduce the uncertainty is through market research. So market research is a method to reduce uncertainty and it allows the possible outcomes of a decision to be quantified most of the time, right? I'm referring to calculation of probabilities, right? So market research technique, is a good way to reduce the uncertainty. So collecting and analyzing the information from different sources and then trying to find out what the future might look like. So marketing research techniques can include so many different ways. For example, questionnaires and interviews from the potential customers. So you can ask questions in detail about their likely future buying requirements and needs, etc. Then another method is test marketing where the prototypes or sample products are tried in small markets. So for example, a food retailer may try a new product, a few number of shops and try to gauge customer feedback and buying patterns, right? Then online panel research is also a good idea. So a group of individuals may have agreed to give feedback 
on marketing research questions, for example, regularly providing details of their buying patterns, right? And then uh, focus group is another way. Focus group is where you choose a group of individuals who may meet to discuss the attributes and features of a new product about their liking. So the feedback is very, very important to actually reduce the uncertainty while making the decisions for future. For example, about a new product design, etc. Now being very specific to the exam and exam questions, the next concept we are going to learn is that of payoff tables, also called as profit tables. So payoff tables or profit tables are normally made by calculating the contribution or profits of the different options and outcomes in an uncertain situation. So the first thing you need to keep in mind is that payoff tables are made when there is uncertain situation. And how would you know that there is uncertainty? So if for the decision, there are multiple outcomes that can happen in future. So multiple outcomes indicate uncertainty, right? Now, payoff table basically is the calculation of different profits or contributions with the different possible options and their outcomes, right? So multiple outcomes and multiple profits are normally calculated. Now, payoff table in itself is not the tool to help with decision making in an uncertain situation but payoff tables are calculated and are required to apply a method to assess uncertainty so we are going to learn about the different methods to assess uncertainty in the next video lectures so before we move on to learning those methods we need to learn how to make a payoff table because number one it can be required in the exam to actually construct or uh, make a payoff table by calculating different possible profits or returns and number two payoff table is the base to apply the different methods to assess uncertainty which we will learn later but first thing is to learn how to make a payoff table now payoff table normally has two variables the options the options are the different decisions in hand so for example, a company wants to invest in project A, uh, can invest in project A or in project B. So A and B projects will be taken as the two options, right? Outcome is basically that how many possibilities of return are available for each of the two options A and B. So for example, if the project A can produce a profit of $10,000, or maybe it will be able to produce the profit of $15,000 depending on the circumstances. So for one option A, there are one and two outcomes, right? So outcomes are linked to one particular option or decision. Similarly, project B can have multiple outcomes of profits or returns. So for payoff table, we consider all the options that are there in the question and we consider all the possible outcomes for each of the option. And now you can make sense of it for each of the option, for all possible outcomes, we calculate the returns in a tabular form and that table is called as a payoff table. So payoff table normally consider outcomes in the form of best, most likely or worst outcome estimates but this is not always the case, right? One important thing to keep in mind is that decision is about the options. And in this case, it is option A and B. Outcomes are not the decisions. They are the outcomes of one particular decision. So the different possibilities of returns, etc. right? So keeping this discussion in mind, now have this idea very clear that payoff table has two variables the options or decisions and the outcomes the outcomes can be for one option can be two three five seven there is no specific you know a number that is defined so let's have a look at an example to understand how to construct a payoff table and this uh, example is coming from one of the past exam questions long form constructive response questions so the question is called GAM Company. Let's read this together now. GAM Company sell electronic equipment and is about to launch a new product onto the market. 
it needs to prepare its budget for the coming year and is trying to decide whether to launch the product at a price of 30 or 35 per unit. So these two prices are the options. You have to decide between 30 and 35. So we have two decisions or options in hand. The following information has been obtained from the market research. Price per unit, 30. So when the price is 30, sales volume can be, there can be three different sales volume. So probability of sales volume number one, 120,000 is 0.4. Probability for sales volume 110,000 is 0.5. And probability for the highest result is 0.1, 140,000 units. So now you can see that $30 price is option number one. And with option number one, there are three outcomes. Similarly, there is this option number two. If the price is $35, the possible sales volume or outcomes are 108,000 units with the relevant probability, 100,000 units again with relevant probability, and 94,000 for the 4.4 probability. So again, one option, three outcomes. So there are two options with three outcomes each. So how many possible profit calculations are possible? So there are three for price of 30 and 3 profit results for price of 35. So a total of 3 plus 3, 6 profit outcomes are possible. So calculating these 6 profits in a tabular form is a payoff table. So payoff in itself represents the return. So sometimes the examiner asks you to calculate the profits and sometimes the examiner might ask you to calculate contribution as a form of return. So you have to read the requirement of the question carefully for that. Right, now some more information is given uh, along with the information options and outcomes. Variable production cost would be $12 per unit if production volumes up to and including 100,000 units each year. So this is important for us to you know, note. However, if the production exceeds 100,000 units, so this is very clearly given in the question that if production exceeds 100,000 units each year, the variable production cost would fall to $11 for all units produced, right? So this is also important to note that if uh, the overall production level exceeds 100,000 units, the variable cost per unit will be $11, not for incremental units only, but for all units produced, right? Advertisement cost, advertising cost would be 900,000 per annum at a selling price of 30 and $970,000 at a price of 35. Of course, if you want to charge higher prices, you will have to make more advertisement to keep the demand intact. All right, next we have fixed production cost would be 450,000 per annum. Now, with this additional information and the table of option uh, and the information presented in the table about options and outcomes, what is required? Requirement is to calculate each of the six possible profit outcomes. So basically six different profits, which could arise for GAM company in the coming year or another requirement for the very same thing can be construct a payoff table for the two price options. All right. So now on this slide, we have the calculations for the profit. So let's discuss all the calculations one by one. So as we know that the options are prices and the outcomes are different sales volumes. So you can first calculate the unit contribution at different levels of output. So there are two prices mentioned 30 and 35. So up to 100,000 units, the contribution is $18 for the price of 30 and above 100,000 units, the contribution is 19. So variable cost actually was 12 per unit for the level of activity of 100,000 units up to and including 100,000 units. And then it was supposed to fall to 11 above 100,000 units, right? So following this information, we have 18 and 19. So 30 minus 12 and 30 minus 11. Similarly, for the price of 35, the contribution per unit is calculated. And especially in the PM exam, you're going to use the spreadsheet format if this is the exam question. 
So it's better to, you know, make your quick calculations first and then use the referencing for these figures. Right, so the first three profits for the sales price of 30, three different volumes are written here, 120,000, 110,000, and 140,000 unit contribution because all these three levels are above 100,000. So 19 will be the unit contribution for all these three levels. Total contribution is calculated, fixed cost is subtracted, and advertising cost is subtracted. So for a price of $30, advertising cost of 900,000 is given in the question. So the profit figures are 930, 740, and 1310, respectively, for price of 30. Similarly, you can check that for price of 35, three volumes are mentioned and unit contributions are mentioned. So unit contribution is 24 for the first level because that's the only level which is above 100,000. The next two levels, 100,000 and 94, are within the range of 100,000 units. So the price contribution of 23 per unit is used. Total contributions are given, fixed costs are subtracted, and for a price of 35, the advertising cost is $970,000 in the question, and hence we have the profits 1172, 880, and 742,000 for each of these three outcomes. So this table is the payoff table or the profit table, right? Now, in the question, the probabilities are also mentioned. So we don't use the probabilities to calculate the payoff table. Probabilities are only used for one of the methods to evaluate risk and uncertainty, and that is expected value, which will be covered in the next video lecture. The last thing for this recording is that once the profit table or the payoff table is made, then we can apply different methods. One of them is expected value, as I mentioned earlier. If you like this video, visit our website www.scansecampus.com to purchase the complete course at affordable prices. Register today at no cost and access our free 10-day trial.